Now, this one I'm really interested to talk to you about because people might remember that your background before was in drug development and you've you've gone through, I think it's 41, am I correct? Um, FDA approved drugs. 45. 45. I mean, that's amazing. Okay, so you are the one of the best people to speak to about this area. And I know that you've spoken about it before, but it's the G- GLP-1 antagonist, which for many people who might not know what that term is, it's also a brand called Zempic. And there's many other on, on the kind of shops, shelves that are very similar, but they're all these GLP-1 antagonists, which is the weight loss drugs. Uh, well, they're actually diabetic drugs, but they're used for weight loss. And I wanted to kind of bring it to the forefront because we've never actually had an in-depth conversation about this before. And I think it's probably because in the last year, I didn't know anyone personally using it. And now mm. I've known a few people in my vicinity using it, which has shocked me. And so that's why I wanted to bring this conversation to the forefront. <clears throat> now, I was looking recently in Stephen Fry has come out in the press and said that he was using it um, and he stopped because he was vomiting five times a day and it made him so, so sick. And that was really quite fascinating for me to read. And now I actually saw you doing an interview on American TV because kids, well, they're doing clinical trials to look at children to see if they're gonna be able to use this drug as young as six because of the obesity weight. One in five American children are obese. And so they're looking at, is this one step to helping them? So I wanted to kind of look at this landscape and see what are your thoughts on this? Because it is actually a diabetic drug. Um, And many people might be confused that it's now actually coming in the UK to our supermarket shelf. So we can go and pick up this drug in a supermarket. So can you, first of all, just talk about what does this drug do? And how does this drug work? And who should be using it? And who should not be using it? Wow. Okay. Let me unpack that. So first of all, let's reel things back and try to take the big picture. Because I think that um, uh, having the frame of the big picture makes it a lot easier to understand um, the facts and 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 what the conclusions are. Okay. So mm-hmm. first of all, GLP-1. Like, you know, those are three letters and a number that you might have heard of, but probably most people have no idea what they stand yeah. for. So it stands for glucagon-like peptide number one. And it's um, a receptor. So a receptor is like a radar dish that actually receives signals, like hormonal signals from the body. And the receptor, the dish, is attached to our cells. And for mm. GLP-1, one of the things we've always known in the medical research world is that when you actually um, uh, 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 send a signal to the dish, what it does is that makes the cells that have the radar dish more sensitive to insulin, more mm. easily able to absorb glucose, and mm-hmm. more efficient in terms of helping to right size our metabolism. Okay, Mm -hmm. so for the reasons, because it can lower glucose and make insulin more efficient, for that reason, it was developed as a drug, and it is true. My background has been in biotech drug development, so you know this is like one of my wheelhouses. Um, It was developed as a drug and approved as a drug because it works in clinical trials. Mm -hmm. That when you actually develop a drug that hits the radar dish, so we actually call it a GLP-1 agonist agonizing the dish as opposed to antagonizing it so it's an agonist it it triggers the radar dish what that does is it makes your body absorb glucose better um helps your helps lower glucose levels and of course you know high glucose levels is sort of metabolic syndrome pre-diabetes diabetes you know all kinds of issues with elevated levels of glucose Mm. But by the way, I want to say why that's that's why that's bad as well because people, so many people talk about the glucose spike. The spike is less worrisome than continuously high levels. Okay, what you're worried about is really elevated, continuously high levels of glucose. So a GLP-1 agonist, the radar triggering system, signaling system, just to helps mm. to lower glucose. Your cells are more efficient. If that's why this this category of drugs was approved by the FDA and in Europe to actually treat people with diabetes, all right? Type mm-hmm. two diabetes in particular. It works pretty safe for most people with diabetes. Um, and it's not the first line, meaning that this is not something you would reach for, certainly not in a grocery store to treat diabetes. I know. All right? 
It's scary. Okay. So I want, I'm going to come back to the grocery store thing in a second. But <laughs> um, so now um, in doing all in, in the experience of actually using the the GLP agonist like Ozempic and Wagovi in real the real world, one of the things that was noticed is that, you know, there's also um, with along with improved metabolism, there's also um, quite clearly weight loss. So long before clinical trials were actually done, which they have been done, there was this observational phenomenon that people who were diabetics who were taking uh, the Ozepics were actually losing weight, lots of weight, okay? And so, uh, and this is really an observation that can be very useful because sometimes a drug developed for use A winds up being equally useful Mm -hmm. or maybe even more useful for use B. And an example of that would be Viagra, okay, the erectile dysfunction drug. Do you know, do you know, Sarah, what Viagra was originally developed for? Do you know? I feel like I do know this, and I've gone blank. No. Okay, Viagra uh, was originally developed to lower blood pressure, and the reason mm. it lowers blood pressure is that the mechanism, the PDE five inhibitor, what it does is it causes your blood vessels to relax. To vasodilate and so when your blood vessels widen your blood pressure drops now in this particular drugs case of viagra when your blood vessels dilate your penis gets bigger too okay and so like erectile function improves and so what happened is that in the clinical trial for hypertension treating hypertension because it works you know the the subjects who were involved in this study were observed to consistently have erections and the drug company said, oh, wait a minute. Wait, maybe we're aiming at the wrong thing here. Maybe let's aim for something else. My point being do you know what this, that... Do you know what this reminds mm, me of? Mm. And this will link into your work. I have Raynard syndrome. And many people on Raynard's go on fluoroxetine, which is an SSRR. I might, might have not said that correctly. Fluoroxetine or mm. fluoroxetine. Mm-hmm. It's an SSRR yeah. drug. And when yeah. they originally said to me, you know, oh, you have such bad, severe Raynard's, we're going to put you on this drug. And I said... Isn't that an SSRI? And they said, yeah, 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 but it's, it's not all the high doses and it really works to heart relax kind of the blood flow to get to your extremities. And that just made me think of these other kind of drug developments where it was obviously made for something else, but now it's being treated to use the Raynaud's and, 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 syndrome. And in, fact, and in fact, Viagra has also been used to treat Raynaud's disease. So the, the idea- <laughs> I've never been offered Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't just offer it to you, so. <laughs> 